Welcome to the Living Well Church podcast and thanks for tuning in today. Our mission as a church is to help people find faith in Jesus and a life of purpose and hope. You're about to watch a message that will challenge you, inspire you, encourage you and most of all point you to Jesus and the life of purpose and hope he has planned for you. So lean in and enjoy and let God speak into your life. not sure I recognise everybody today. I'm still thinking of many of you yesterday dressed up. I sort of felt yesterday was the beginning of Christmas for me, and uh, which is good because the theme today is about Christmas as well. Whether you have realised or not, it's three weeks today to Christmas Day. So 21 days. These days, that's 21 shopping days, of course, because shops are open and the internet's always open. So I'm just going to look a little bit today about Christmas. Is it just one day? So are you all ready? Anybody totally prepared? Who's bought their cards, written them and posted them? Am I going to be the only one? Oh, no, Jack has. And is that because you don't buy any? Yeah. (laughs) Anybody bought all their presents and wrapped them all? Oh, this, I'm not the only one who's done that. Anybody got the food and the menu all sorted? Sprouts are on. Sprouts are on. Perfect. <laughs> Mandy, come to me for Christmas Day. <laughs> yep. That's sorted for me because I don't have to do any of it. Anybody got their decorations up? I'm a definite no here. Oh, Josie has. Oh, not many, actually. Uh, Who's got the delight of children in a school nativity in a costume to make? <laughs> oh, you have my sympathy, Emma. <laughs> but, you know, it does seem to me that it, as in our culture now in Britain, this one day, Christmas Day, well, number one, it starts earlier each year. And it just seems to involve, year on year, a lot more time, a lot more effort, a lot more money, and for lots of people, a lot more stressed, stress for just one day. I suppose the only other time we really do something, all that effort into one day, is probably the day we get married. But we do this every year. But effort to do what? Are you trying to make that fairy tale perfect day from the Christmas adverts? Maybe you're trying to make sure your children keep up with all the others and get the latest toys and you fit to the latest trends might just be trying to fit in. Maybe you're trying to portray a perfect family on Christmas Day. Hands up who achieves that one. Oh, Paul. That must be all Josie's hard work. (laughs) But apparently this effort to make this one day this year, this is staggering. In the UK, 5.6 billion is going to be spent, not on Christmas uh, Christmas presents, on retailers' adverts. 5.6 billion, they reckon, this year on just advertising from our retailers. I mean, there isn't many occasions in the office, you know, normally I'd tell them off for being on Facebook or something, but we all sat round and watched the John Lewis advert the day it came out. How sad. Apparently, I don't know, I'm not going to ask you to show hands for this, the average household spend on presents, you might be, we could do Brucey higher, lower, is £700. I, was, I thought the average might have been higher than that. But, but when I looked at that figure, that is just over twice the average net pay for the average earner. So 50 weeks, two weeks for Christmas presents. However, despite all that effort... All that trying to achieve, 32% of us last year received at least one unwanted present. Again, I'm not asking for hands, in case you're sat next to the person who gave it to you. And 4.2 million dinners were wasted. They obviously didn't have Gary's. But 4.2 million dinners were wasted. I imagine that's people over-catering and things. And then I thought, but really, what's all this effort to celebrate? Now, if you walked into Tesco's, and I'm sure other retailers, it's just Tesco's is near us, you might assume, if you just landed on this planet, that this celebration was about snow. 
reindeers, trees, nice country scenes, some penguins, a few presents, and a guy in a red dress. I got a bit stressed with Tesco's, although they have redeemed it. There are a pack now. For weeks and weeks, there wasn't one pack of cards in Tesco's that even sort of portrayed anything about the nativity and the Christmas story. So it's even hard to work out what we're putting all this effort in for. The latest survey I could find online was actually 2010, and 51% of the people surveyed said, the birth of Jesus is totally irrelevant to my Christmas. You could take that negatively. I was really pleased that 49% actually thought there was some relevance, actually, because I thought it might be higher. 54% of people think Christmas is overrated. So maybe there's sort of 3% there who know it's about Jesus but haven't met him. 61% of people think it's mainly for the children. I, I think we'd have expected that number. But 18% of people surveyed dread Christmas. So what's it really all about? What is the effort for? Who is the reality of the baby Jesus in the stable? And what I want us to see this morning is Christmas is really not just for one day. In the same way that when you get married, it's actually your wedding is representing the rest of your married life. Christmas is one day for us to celebrate the whole of our life with Jesus. Every day, every year. For every one of us. Just in case you don't know the story, you should have been here yesterday, you'd have seen it, but just in case you don't, I'm going to, you know, the scene, stable, very heavily pregnant Mary, virgin birth about to happen, very resolute Joseph, boiling the water or whatever, few cows and oxen, few sheep, and then some angels, some shepherds, some kings. That's how we do see it when we find a lovely card, don't we, at Christmas. This reality of Christmas. Fairy tale nativity, happy ever after scene. But actually, for me, the situation 2,000 years is no different to today. There were just some normal people trying to get through life. There was some poverty around and some hardship. There were really difficult and really sad family situations going on. There were some oppressed people. There were people being invaded, their countries being invaded. And you know what we see through the Christmas story and the times that Jesus was born? There was a world no different to our own, full of fear, full of some hate, full of corruption, full of sadness. And the reality is, Jesus came 2,000 years ago to a world very like ours, just without Facebook. You know, Jesus, the Son of God, he came to the stark reality of our world, but he transformed it. So rather than experiencing a cute fairy tale, happily ever after story, I wonder if you realise today that actually the story of the Nativity is good news for everyone. Hope, whatever your situation is, through the baby. Transformation of your life for all of us through the baby. What we're really celebrating at Christmas, or meant to be, is that God sent his son, Jesus, to our earth. He sent him, why? Well, we could get really theological and talk about fulfilling prophecies and bringing redemption and salvation. But really, bottom line, easy language, Jesus came to make a difference in your life and in mine. You know, when we read the Christmas story, we can find it in the beginning of Matthew and Mark and John, different, uh, Mac, Matthew, Mark and Luke, sorry, different bits to piece the whole story together. You'll realise that all of it centres around Jesus. So what the angel tells Joseph, what the angel tells the shepherds, what the wise men are seeking, what the angel tells Mary, what Simeon sees when the eight-day-old Jesus is taken to the temple, is all showing us exactly that this baby can change our world and you forever. And I just wanted to look at a couple of things really quickly. There are many more in the story. You know, when in, we read in Matthew 1, when the angel came and told Joseph, you know, fear not, don't, don't worry, you are going to marry this girl still. 
He told Joseph that the baby Mary was carrying, amongst other things it told him, would save people, would set them free. He said, this baby will save people from their sins. Lots of what we've sung today shows how. You know, one of the verses we just sang about how Jesus came and died for us. How he lived amongst men. Why? Because he wanted to influence your life today. He wanted to take away the influence of sin and replace it with new life. With what? With hope, transformation, joy, peace. And that's why Jesus came. We also read in that same bit of Matthew 1 that this baby was Emmanuel. Now, actually, when you go shopping, you may see, Marks and Spencer's have got some, some cards with Emmanuel on. They've got that and a star. And all Emmanuel means is God with us. That's the actual wonderful reality of Christmas Day. God with me. God with you. God beside me. God leading me. God loving me. God caring for me. That's why Jesus came. So that whatever situation you're facing today, whatever situation you're going to face tomorrow, whatever situation is in your future or you still can't deal with from your past, the reality is that Emmanuel came to be with you. And I wonder on Christmas Day whether you'll realise that. Whether you'll realise that God is with you. When we read in Luke chapter 2 about the angels visiting the shepherds, one of the things they tell the shepherds is that this baby that they needed to go and see would bring peace. Now, I guess for lots of people, December's not very peaceful. I think November wasn't very peaceful for Beth, preparing for yesterday. But often, we're just rushing around, ticking lists, sorting things out. But actually, during the rush of this season, at the beginning of it, let's just remember that the pressures of that stark reality of your life, maybe some of the stress, some of the torment, that actually Emmanuel came to bring peace. To break through the clouds. To calm the storm. Emmanuel came to bring peace. So, as you carry on preparing for Christmas Day, if you're not as organised as, as I am, maybe find some time to stop and to realise whether you're really celebrating for the right reason. I'm certainly not telling you not to celebrate Christmas. It's a joy to celebrate at Christmas. But do you realise the greatest gift is that baby? A baby for me and for you for every day. Now, this baby Jesus, if we picture him like that, it's really easy to understand. Actually, he's not going to force himself on you. He's not going to manipulate you. Actually, it's up to you. Whether you unwrap the gift of Jesus and how you unwrap and how soon you unwrap is up to you. It's whether you want to. Now, my maternal grandfather unwrapped presents in the most annoying way possible. He'd sniff them. There was nothing to smell. He'd shake them. He'd put them down just to wind us up as grandchildren. Then he'd pick them back up again. Then he'd sniff it and then go, oh, I think it's... Oh, no, I don't know. And, then he'd... and he took forever. And when he opened his presents, he'd, like, try and peel them. And it wasn't that he was being particularly careful. He was just doing it for us to all get excited and shout at him, open the present, open the present, which we did every time true to form. But actually, that's how I feel a bit today. If you haven't opened the present of Jesus, I want to shout, open the present. I don't mind if you rip the paper off or do it carefully, but I want you to find Jesus. I want you to unwrap the gift of Jesus. And when you unwrap him, I don't want you to leave him in the stable. I don't want you even just to unwrap him for Christmas, leading up to and Christmas Day. I don't want him to be forgotten on Boxing Day. I don't want it to be that unwanted gift because it's the best gift you can ever have. And it's up to you. You can, amidst everything else this December, experience the reality of Christmas 
You can take the gift and actually you can unwrap it every day. I promise you there's something new and exciting and uh, rewarding every day when you walk with Jesus. It's up to you. Do you want to spend the rest of your life daily receiving and unwrapping the reality of Jesus, Emmanuel, God with you? I suppose the only question left to ask is, how open are you to that? How open is your heart to hear the peace of Emmanuel in your situation? How open are your eyes and your ears to look for and hear that God is calling you? How open are you in your life to just step aside from everything else and just today and then for every day receive Emmanuel, Jesus, just for you?